Here I have a model with imported geometry and I need to move this boss over here to be on top of this pad located on this axis. And since I've got imported geometry, I don't have features that I can edit definition. So this is an excellent case for using flexible modeling. I click on the flexible modeling tab. Then I start by selecting a seed surface and from the mini toolbar, if I highlight over the boss command, I will just get basically the main extrude and its draft. If I hover over bosses, that's all the geometry that I want to move. So I'm going to click that. And then from the mini toolbar, here is the move command. And it shows move using dragger. I actually want to use move with dimensions, or excuse me, move using constraints. And I can get to that from this drop down list on the ribbon. And for moving this geometry, I'm going to have to create some references in that geometry to facilitate the move. And so if I click on the References tab, here we have the Move Curves and Datums collector. I'm going to click in it. And then if I go to the Datum command over on the right-hand side of the ribbon, I can create the necessary datum features in order to move this. So I'm going to start by creating a datum plane. And for the references, I will select a couple of the edges of the geometry that I am moving. And from the display tab, I always like to adjust the outline if I can, because by default, your datum planes are going to be slightly bigger than the model. And I'm only moving this stuff, so I'm going to make it as big as that geometry. And let's rename it. Let's call it my move plane. And I will click the OK button. And for the next reference I need, I'm going to create an axis. And let's create, right, it had the datum plane still selected. Let's remove that. And I just want it to go through this cylinder. And I'll call this appropriately move axis. And hit the OK button. Now let's resume the dashboard. And if I go to the References tab, oops, looks like we don't have the plane in there. Let's hold down the Control key and get the Move plane as well. Now for placement for my different constraints, for the moving geometry, I can select the Move plane. And I select it out of the Model tree just for ease. And then pick that flat surface that I want to move it to. And right now it's using a distance constraint, but I want it to be coincident. And so it's going to move all that geometry up a little bit. And for the second constraint, I'm going to use my selection filter to limit my pick to axes. And for the fixed geometry, it's going to be this axis over here. For the moving geometry, it's going to be that axis that I just created. And right now it's giving a distance constraint. Once again, let's change that to coincident. And there we can see the preview of the geometry. Looks pretty good except for one thing. I see the boss is slightly wider than the pad itself. So it's extending the geometry downward. So lastly, if I go to the attachment tab, I can click in the collector for bounding edges. And if I pick this edge over here, it's going to adjust the moved geometry so that it stops at the edges of those surfaces. It doesn't continue down to intersect with the rest of the imported geometry. And so that is good. And there's a whole lot of additional tools that you can use from here. So you can see that you can create side surfaces and extend and intersect. And from the options tab, we have stuff for pattern and symmetry and mirror and extending and splitting. Uh, lots of bells and whistles in here. But for the move that I'm interested in, I've got everything that I need. So I can hit the check mark. And my geometry is relocated the way that I want. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.